you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Hello, everyone. This is Monica Dennington, and welcome to your Sunday morning service. We are broadcasting to you live from the desert of Phoenix, Arizona, as we come together to learn how to have church in the end times. Today's message, which you will get at monicadennington.com, pull that up in another browser. This is session two of our How to Get Your Healing series. So this is going to be very powerful for you and your friends. Everybody needs some sort of healing, don't they? So please share this on your pages and be sure to watch every um, uh, episode for the next uh, few weeks. It's going to be going on for another two weeks after this uh, because God is going to do a powerful work in your life. Today's message is faith for healing. How much is enough? This answers the question, am I just not being healed because I don't have enough faith? As we saw in uh, the opening passage, Jesus was able to heal people who had just a little bit of faith. And if you feel that your faith isn't big enough, remember that Jesus said that it only has to be as big as the tiniest seed in your garden, the mustard seed. Um, When you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain because that's all it takes to send you running to the feet of Jesus Christ. And when you get there, you can ask him for everything you lack, including the faith you lack. And guess what? He said, if you ask, you will receive, whether it's faith or healing or salvation. He is good and faithful and he is going to do it. So God has good news for you today if you need healing. So go over to monicadennington.com. This week, the next few weeks, that prayer button is is so important. We want you to send in your prayer requests, especially prayers for healing, um, healing of all kinds. Um, If you know people that need healing, send in prayer requests for them as well, because we are believing that God is going to be moving in a powerful way to heal you through the power of his word, through his promise, he is going to do it. And his His uh, word is very effective in this. He's also going to alleviate a lot of your fears. Some of you who have been wondering why you haven't been healed yet, you've been praying for a long time and you're getting conflicting answers. And sometimes it feels like maybe you've been left behind. Maybe, you know, you're just not with the program or maybe God doesn't love you as much. Um, it can be very frustrating when you get the wrong information about healing and about God. God, but God's word is going to, it's going to clear up all of those questions so that the very first and foundational thing that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that God loves you so much. He loves you just as much as he loves anybody else and that he loves you enough to die for you, hang on a cross and die for you to pay for your sins and also to take those stripes for you so that you may be healed. That applies to you and you're going to know that. You're going to know that God's promises are for you even if you are one of the very faithful saints who have had to wait a long time to see your promise fulfilled. So take heart. God is going to be healing your heart, your mind, and your body today. Put in those prayer requests at monicadennington.com. Remember to use your other two buttons. Donate is for your tithes and offerings. If you prefer to give as a tithe, the set percentage of your income, that this is a, a good place to do it. If you just want to give whatever offerings come, um, what the, the Holy Spirit tells you to give in order to support uh, the people of God through the Word of God, This is an appropriate place to do that if you're getting uh, teaching here, if you're getting the word of God here. So we encourage you to exercise your faith by trusting in God, by giving those offerings. That's uh, an act of worship this morning, and that's how we come together and worship here. And isn't it wonderful to be able to come together, that we're in so many different places. This is one way that the remnant of the body of Christ, and we've been called out of Babylon Many of you have been called out of your churches, and the question is, how do we have church in the end times? Well, it may not look like what we're used to, but we still have all of these elements in place Uh, that we can come together, that we can pray together, that we can worship together, that we can give together, and um, that we can hear the word of the Lord together, and that in spirit we are together in unity and in truth. Isn't that a wonderful thing that God has provided for us in this last generation when we need each other so much and so often feel uh, that we are separated? So if we're not separated, we're with you this morning, and we want to hear your prayer requests even this morning. If you're there, 
prayer on the board. Um, get on the text chat and let me know if you have a prayer request. Um, right, you have to do it right now. I'm getting ready to do prayer requests. So <laughs> Gary will stop me at the end of my prayer request and let me know if anybody uh, pops on the board with a prayer request. Okay, so um, we're first of all going to do spe- a couple of specific uh, prayer requests. <clears throat> Um, some of you may have heard that Jan Crouch of, uh, you know, Paul and Jan Crouch, uh, founded TBN, uh, but Jan Crouch has had a stroke and, uh, she's 78 years old. Her family has said that she, um, the doctors say that she's unlikely to recover from this stroke and they are praying for a miracle and they want to ask us to pray with them for a miracle. So we want to pray for this whole family as they are, um, you you know, going through this time that's very difficult. They love their mom very much. And um, this is a family that, you know, has a lot of influence in the in the Christian realm. And they have this uh, network to deal with. We just want to pray for their family um, right now um, that God will bless them and that God will heal Jan. And then um, we want to pray for my friend Johnny, who has such great faith. We're going to be talking about faith, reading about faith. Um, and healing, and uh, what a beautiful light she is, as she is always speaking words of faith, even through trials and difficult times, and uh, so we want to bless her by praying for her uh, today. She put up a a Facebook post um, with a picture that said, believe, imagine, peace on it, and then she said, can you do this with me and my family this summer? We need to believe and imagine peace. Can you pray for us that we will have that this summer. So we are going to do that as well. Father in heaven, we thank you because you have promised that if we ask, we will receive. If we seek, we uh, will find. And if we knock, the door will be open. So we come together in agreement and we knock on heaven's door this morning. We knock on your door this morning because we know that our father has a face and our father has a name. And we call you Abba Father because you are not just the father of all, but you are our Father, and we love you and we trust you, Lord. We know that you know how to give good gifts to your children. And so we come before you with these requests, knowing that you have promised to move on our behalf. We ask you to bless the family of Jan Crouch right now. We want to pray for her as she um, is struggling in that place between life and death. You know, she's not conscious, but, um, you know, they're saying that she's unlikely to recover from this stroke. We want to pray for peace. Lord God, that you would speak to her even in the state that she's in, that you would cradle her in your arms, that you would bring her any healing she needs, any forgiveness she needs, whether to receive it or give it. Even in that state, Lord God, we know that you can speak to her and deal in her heart and comfort her, Lord God, and bring her everything that she needs. We pray that she would be in peace as we are waiting for her healing, Lord God, and ultimately all of our healing will come. Uh, those of us who believe in Jesus, we know that our ultimate healing comes when we die in this flesh. But we just pray right now for healing. Um, as long as we have Jan with us, we're going to pray with the family for what they want. They're asking for a miracle, Lord God. And you didn't tell us, you know, exactly what we have to ask. You, you said we can ask, you know, what we want. If it's according to your will, then you're going to do it. So we do trust your will, Lord God, but we ask you for what we want. We want for this family to have their request, that you would give them a miracle, that you would heal their mom, heal Jan, let her wake up, let her wake up with revelation of you, of heaven, Uh, let her have peace, Lord God, and uh, bring healing to that family, Lord. Every family has a lot to deal with, but this family, of course, um, you know, being uh, in, in a position of influence in the kingdom of God, they have all kinds of spiritual battles coming against them. And Satan wants to take them down through division, uh, through sin, through every, every possible door he can find, just like with all of us, but especially those who are in the spotlight. And so we want to ask you to give them mercy and grace, Lord God, as you know, every, every drama in their life gets played out in front of everyone, every, every success and every mistake. It's a, a very volatile position to be in. So we want to pray for blessing for that whole family that through this and through the healing as well that you are bringing, that you would bring healing to relationships, Lord God, the 
that you would bring healing to the family and that you would give them peace in their hearts, knowing that your will is being done and that you are working and moving still in that family, that you don't stop that, you know, we, we may have been Christians for a long time, but you still have a fresh new work to do in us and in our families and in our lives and in our ministries. And we pray that for the Crouch family. In Jesus' name, Lord God, bring that healing to Jan and bring it also to every member of her family in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, I just lift up to you my friend Johnny and her family, her crew, as she said, she said, uh, she asked asked us to believe and imagine peace for her and her family this summer. They need some peace, Lord, and she's asking for it, and she's come to the right place. She's coming to you, and we come to you on her behalf and ask you to give her peace and her whole family peace. And she really hit on something important when it comes to faith, and that's imagining the outcome um, that we want to see. We have to set our eyes on the promises that you've given us, and peace is certainly one of those promises. So we thank you for her faith and we pray that her faith would be greatly rewarded as you just bless her and her family with peace this summer and beyond. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to go to our scripture reading right now, which is Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 19 and 29 through 39. And um, this is going to go along perfectly with your message today. So stand uh, for the reading of the word if you like to do so. And you may feel free to read along with me. I'm reading out of the NIV. Hebrews 11. <clears throat> now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go uh, to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. 
By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Amen. Isn't that awesome, you guys, that God has given us such examples of faith, not only the faith that raises people from the dead and causes us to have great victory in battle and see all these miracles of the Lord, but also the faith that helps us to get through trials. And he tells us that people of great faith very often go through horrible trials that are very difficult, and yet they still hold on to the promises that God has given them because they they all acknowledge whether you've experienced this, this glorious stuff or these trials, and you're going to experience both as a godly person, as someone who follows Jesus. It says all, everyone who wants to be godly will be persecuted. It says that a righteous man will know many troubles, but God will deliver him out of them all. You will see in all of these things that we are looking for something ultimately that is greater than anything we can achieve or gain or experience on this earth. In this temporary life, we have our eyes set on a heavenly city and a heavenly promise and a life, an eternal life with our living God. That's our real reward. And that's what God said to Abraham he gave him so many great promises, and he's given you so many great promises. He's given you a promised land that, you know, may be something here on this earth, okay? Um, but, you know, you may have to wander around this earth like Abraham for a while, like a stranger in a foreign land before you see the fruit of that promise. That's okay, okay? God has given you these great promises, and, you know, like Abraham, you may have to wait. In fact, at the end, it says of that passage that many of these people, not, actually none of these people, <laughs> received what they were really hoping for. As Abraham, yes, he was promised all these great things in this life, but guess what? The real promise was given when God said, Abraham, I am your very great reward. And that is the ultimate promise. That was the promise and the city that Abraham was looking for. And that is the word of the Lord to you today. Whatever you're seeking from him today, he's willing to give it to you and he's going to touch you. He's going to heal you. He's going to help you. Okay. He loves you and he's going to keep his promises to you. But the best promise that he's given you is that God and Jesus Christ, his son, they are your very great reward. They are the ultimate treasure that we are seeking because the love of God, that's what we really want, isn't it? The love of God heals all wounds. The love of God fills us up. It satisfies us in every way. And that's really uh, what we all need. And you can have that today through faith in the word of God, through the spirit of God. And so I want to pray for all of you who need healing today. Um, I want us all to come together and pray for every person that's watching that needs healing specifically. Father in heaven, we come to you and we thank you because you are a father. As you said, you know how to give good gifts to your children. You said, if you who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more do I know how to give good gifts to my children? If they come to me asking me for bread, will I give them a stone? If they come to me asking for a fish to eat, will I give them a snake, a serpent that's going to bite them? 
No, of course not. And there are some people who are listening today, Lord God, who need healing. Some of them may have been asking for healing for a very long time, Lord. And I pray that they would have faith in that promise that when you said you are a good father, it's not just everyone else. That promise is for them too. And that they have not been left behind. That you have a purpose in everything. When you give them a promise, when you fulfill that promise, and even in the period of time that they have to wait for that promise. That good purpose is that you want to draw them closer to you. And so I pray that you would release the, any bitterness and, and any uh, pain and any wounds um, that may have been afflicted as people have been waiting for their healing, especially if they have heard from the pulpit that the reason they're not getting their healing is because they're doing something wrong and they don't have enough faith. Um, or if they feel that way, that they've seen other people receive their miracles, but they feel like they've been passed by. You have not passed them by. And I pray that you would just let the spirit breathe into them the healing that they need and the faith that they need. Just like that man asked for faith when he was saying, Oh God, please heal my son. Or if you can, (laughs) and Jesus said, what do you mean? If you can, (laughs) don't you have faith without faith? It's, you know, with faith, anything is is possible. And just like that man, all of us who feel that we're lacking in faith sometimes, and even maybe in this moment, just like him, we say, oh God, I do believe. Help me with my unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. Because you are here to give us everything that we need to unlock our healing. You don't give us a locked box without the key. And you don't give us a locked box and say, hey, if you can find the key, then uh, then I'll let you in. <laughs> Your healing's inside. Good luck. <laughs> Just like a good father, you give us everything that we need and you make it accessible to us and you don't play a game with us of snatching it away at the last minute, but you are right there to lead us and guide us into the perfect promise that you have. So right now, every person that is listening that needs healing in their mind, emotions, and in their heart, Lord God, I pray that a healing balm would flow forth through your word, Lord God, through your promises, by your spirit right now, supernaturally to heal them. Anyone who needs to forgive those who have wronged them, Lord God, if there is a stronghold locked up in their hearts of unforgiveness, I release them in the name of Jesus by the power of Jesus right now from that unforgiveness. And we speak healing to them right now in Jesus name. Your spirit is going forth and doing its work. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We pray for all those who are brokenhearted that you would bind up the brokenhearted, Lord God, because a broken heart crushes a man's spirit, Lord God. And we need you to come and be our healer, our doctor. So do that right now, Lord God. Speak to their hearts and let them know, yes, I love you. And no one, no one can take that away from you. Nothing that's ever happened in your past and nothing that's ever going to happen in your future. No angel, no demon, no power above or below heaven or hell. Nothing can change the fact that I love you. And there has never been a person on this planet that I love more than I love you. And that is what the Lord is saying to you today. If you have a broken heart, God is saying, I love you. Remember, I have chosen you. You are my child. And I'm going to give you everything that you need. Trust in me. Lord God, right now we lift up to you every person who has a need for healing in their bodies. We speak to the bodies in the name of Jesus. And we command them to be healed. We speak to any evil spirits, like in the case of this man we read about, that may be keeping them in physical bondage. We speak to those evil spirits and we command them to loose your people in the name of Jesus. Those spirits that are bringing sickness and disease, we command you to come out of them in the name of Jesus. Come out of them. The chains are breaking right now in Jesus' name. And for every physical ailment, everything that's out of balance, Lord God, anything that is broken, anything um, that is, you know, uh, out of... um, that's out of kilter, whether it be cancer or infection, we speak against those things in the name of Jesus. We speak against every form 
of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to begin to knit together what has been torn apart and anything that has been wired in the wrong way, we pray that you would rewire it. We pray that you would speak to the brains in the name of Jesus that have, you know, um, issues, um, whether they be imbalances or, you know, whatever it is. You are the one who knit us together in the womb. You know how we're made. You know how intricately our soul and our spirit and our bodies are intertwined. And only you can understand how to undo the knots <laughs> that are caused by just living in this world and being in a, a sinful world and a, and a sinful fallen body. We pray that you would heal all of those things in the name of Jesus. Whoever has pain right now, Lord God, I pray that you would heal the root cause of their pain and that you would relieve their pain in the name of Jesus and that it would be permanent, that it would be permanent relief, Lord God. I pray that you would take away pain in the name of Jesus in, in the people that are listening that need that relief in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray that you would always go to the root and heal us from the root because we want to live in peace. We don't want a temporary fix. We want to live in your spirit. We want to live in peace. And we want those healings to reflect that same spirit, Lord God. Let them be thorough. Let them be permanent. And of course, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing permanent about this life, Lord God, but we know that we are all going to face death as our bodies are going to break down in, into dust at some point. And those of us who are lucky enough to live a long life, that are blessed with long life, we're going to see that breakdown start <laughs> sometime before we hit the grave. But Lord God, we thank you that in all of these things that you have promised relief, you've promised healing, and that you've promised strength as we wait patiently for the promise that we know we have in you. I thank you that healing is happening right now for people that are uh, within the sound of my voice, people who are going to be within the sound of my voice as those who are listening on video later, that you have planned for them to hear the word of the Lord, that you have planned for their healing and that you are moving right now and that you're going to continue to move and continue to heal as we go forward in the next week, in the next month, that this is what you are doing. We thank you. We thank you for moving on our behalf. And we thank you that there is not one single heart that you're going to pass over, that you're going to touch every single person with peace and with healing, Lord God, and with the assurance to know that whether they are in their waiting period for their promised land or whether it's the moment to receive it, that no matter what moment we're in, the thing that does not change is that you are with us that you love us, and that you will perform your promises for us. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I expect to hear those prayer, um, those prayer requests and also the praises. So remember to go to monicadennington.com. Use all three buttons, every, every one of them, prayer, donate, and decision this morning. And you can use that decision button um, or the prayer button to give praise reports as well. Remember that when you give your praise reports, um, when you tell that how God has healed you, maybe he's healed you um, while we're praying for you. Maybe, um, and I say we, not because I'm more than one person, but because <laughs> our whole family is going to be praying for you, okay? Uh, we all act as, as a team here, and whenever we receive your prayer requests, we pray for you um, when we get those, as well as on the air, okay? Um, but, um, <clears throat> but we want to hear... Um, even, you know, if God has healed you at another time, it doesn't matter because the person who gets the credit is God. When you share those praise reports, it also builds up the faith of other people. When they hear the trial that you went through and when they hear about the waiting, even when they hear about the pain, sometimes the patience um, that it takes, you know, it encourages them to know that they're not alone and that God loves people just like them. Okay. And they want to hear that and we want to share it with them. So share your praise reports as well. Don't forget that. It's very important that we give God glory for the glorious things that he does. Okay. So use all three of those buttons, pray, prayer, donate, and decision, and then be sure to share today's message, which is faith for healing. How much is enough? <laughs>